see what the mail brought us. Looks like we got something from old Whalen Noir. Let's see here. Look at there. Whalen Noir. What could possibly go wrong? Make this thing like brand new. Hey, it's Rick here. Well, hey, we got old Mikey back up here at the garage, and uh, today we're going to work on that transmission. If you remember, we got the old girl running pretty good finally. Took care of all them problems up in there. Sort of. And uh, what I'd like to do is make sure that the transmission, we can get it working and shifting and all that. So we're going to adjust the bands today, change the filter, and dump in some fresh fluid when we pull the pan off the, off the transmission. And if that fixes everything, then we're probably going to change the oil and filter on the engine. All right. Thanks for stopping in. Be sure and like and share. Ring that bell. Come along for the journey. Show you more. Opportunity to make this thing like brand used, and uh, you don't always get that opportunity. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take these 14 pan bolts loose, and I'm going to try to maneuver this pan that's too small underneath this so that I don't get any transmission fluid on the driveway. So let's see how that works out. I'm going to try to take them out on this side, loose on this side and let it fall down and get most of the oil out that way. And then we're going to pull the filter and then we're going to go over here on this side and do a band adjustment and then we're going to do the, which is the low and reverse, and then we're going to do the band adjustment uh, for the kick down, which is inside here. And then we're going to take our air and we're going to make sure the servos are working. And if that doesn't fix the issue, then it's going to have to be pulled out and overhauled. So, but I am hoping that we do not have to do that. So, without further ado, let's get started. And of course, that's in the way, so I'm going to have to go get me a what you call it. Okay, so I went and got me a universal, and just so you know what I do, I take tape and put around my universals. That keeps them a little more uh, stiff. That way uh, you're not trying to fight the thing flopping around, and it'll still give. So follow this around. There's the first bolt. be a lot better if I had a lift like old... Vice Grip Garage or Whalen Wire, they got a nice lift. But I don't have that. Come 
Ground Zero Volume. Hold tight, wait. out here there's a little bit of sludge right here but less than I thought there would be because uh, I know the pan's been off obviously so makes me wonder you know what's going on in here but uh, yeah so um, Okay, well, let me clean this up a little bit in here. Let this drip a little. I'm clean this pan up. We got to pull this filter down. Uh, looks like some regular screws, which will let some more fluid out generally. And uh, we'll get it cleaned up. We'll get down in here and we'll do a band adjustment. There's a lot of people doing these band adjustments on YouTube. And uh, I've watched a, a bunch of them. Uh, some of the techniques are what I would do and some not. Um, so we're going to do it the way the book says, or at least the book that I have says, and then we'll go from there. All right, show you more. All right, I don't know how good you can see here, but what we got to do on this um, <clears throat> this band here is we got to loosen this lock nut up and go out five rounds, it says, for whatever damn reason. And then we're going to torque this uh, quarter inch square nut to 27 inch pounds. 
And then we're going to back it off. We're going to mark it with chalk. Back it off two complete turns. And then we're going to tighten this jam nut down to 30 foot-pounds. So this might be exciting, guys. All right. I haven't done this in years. I hope you can see it. I can't tell if you're looking at it or not. But hopefully you are. Okay. So we're going to make an attempt here. We're using a 9 16 ratchet. Oops, I hit you. Sorry about that. Hopefully you're still looking. All right, I'm going to loosen this booger up a little. Maybe. Okay, we want five rounds, it says. Two, three, four, and five. That looks good enough. All right. Now, I ain't got no square socket. They make an actual socket for this. So what I did was I took an eight millimeter and took it over to the vise and mashed it. And that way, it'll fit on there, hopefully. Well, I might have mashed her a little bit too much, guys. I think I'm gonna have to modify that some more to get that to fit up on there. There it goes. Okay. Well, I had it. So we're going to tighten this thing down. Now, I'm hoping that brass shim is in under there because I can't see anything with that valve body in the way. Because it's obvious that somebody has been into this transmission. So... Uh, boy, that thing's went three turns. It was really out of adjustment. Because even after you tighten it down, you only back it out two. Now, this is the A727, uh, and the, if someone adjusted this according to the, the other Chrysler transmissions or beings that it was in a V8, if they use the V8 specs, they're different. So... can't get that to stay up on there, dog, on it. All right, I'm going to shut you off and go modify this just a little bit. All right, show you more. All right, I don't know how good you can see under here. But hopefully, you can see some. So, anyway, I modified my socket a little bit here to make this fit on here and we got to do 27 inch pounds it will fit on here because I just tried it there we go Okay, that's 27 right there. All right, now we're going to wipe this off and we're going to back that off. I don't know if you can see what I'm gonna do in here. I'll try to get you up here. But I am going to mark this. And then I'm gonna come up here and mark right here. So we can count two full turns. I wish this thing would focus. Two full turns off of that. Okay. Now let me get a wrench so we can turn that. Okay, so we're going to get up in here and sorry I ain't got no way to run the camera any better than this. But there's our mark. We're lined up there. I don't know if you can see it. So we're going to go two full turns. Oops, there's my hand got in the way. There's a half. There's one. There's two. Okay. 
Now we're going to tighten this down, this bolt down here to 30 foot pounds, keeping this in line with this. Okay. Yeah, I figured that'd move on me a little when I started tightening it, so let me pull her back just a little. I'll go a little past that, and then we'll snug it. Once it gets snug, I don't think it'll move anymore. There. Now let's do 30 foot-pounds on that. I'll have to set you down here, and hopefully you can see. Need some fancy equipment. Need a cameraman. Come on, guys, step up to the plate. Uh, need some better tools, too. Land sakes alive. We're going for 30 on this. Big old gunculator torque wrench here. There's 30 right there. Okay, so, whoops, hell, I mark, wiped my marks off, but they were there. You probably saw them before I hit it with my glove. And we got some, we still got play in this, but not like we did have. If you remember, that thing was about to fall off before. Okay, so there's that side. Now let's go over on the other side of the transmission over here and set up for the other side. All right, show you more. Okay, this one is up here on the driver's on the driver's side, right there. I don't know how good you can see it, but I don't know how I'm going to record this one. So I'm just going to get in here and do it, and then uh, you guys will just have to believe me. And by the way, here's the numbers on your Chrysler transmissions are right across here. That's the serial number. That one right there is the production date, which this one is like September of, well, I don't remember, 1974 or something like that. And then that's a, that's your uh, coinciding numbers with the VIN and, tran or I mean, with the en engine. So you should have this series of numbers minus a few of these whenever you're matching your engine with your okay so uh, as you can see maybe see I don't know. we got that one adjusted so um, the next thing we're going to do and that one was really kind of difficult to get to but I wanted to show you that you can do it with tools that you have I mean they make an actual socket for that and then they make a, a see-through socket where you can hold the adjustment screw and and torque the lock nut down on it but I don't have any of that stuff and you know hey you know this stuff works wrench and the homemade socket here I took a eight millimeter and smashed it kind of flat and then uh, worked it out with a center punch it works fine and I didn't have to spend any money I, I, you know we want to get this thing running but um, I don't want to spend everything I got on it why would I want to do that but I will tell you that I think the transmission's been out before and I'll give you some telltale signs back here on this uh, reverse and low, low servo for example if you look up in here let me get my flashlight if you look up in here you can see that pin that little pin right there hopefully you can see that that's been tapped back in because you can see the tap marks and um, you can actually take this servo out but you gotta take and either split the transmission or you gotta grind off this little tab here and then you can when you take the valve body off you can knock that pin out and pull this down out of there but so but I think somebody's worked on it before because the spit I just put the speedometer cable back in these little clips but that was all down this was all loose 
So I think it, it's been a long time ago, as nasty and dirty as it is under here with that thing, but you know, there's a leaf. Let's get that out of there. But uh, I still think that somebody's probably worked on it through the years. Um, and we know that the pan gasket had been off, and it's been a long time since that pan gasket had been off because the filter is just filthy. So, um, tells me that, you know, somebody's been messing with it. The band adjustments were off quite a bit, especially this, this one. And uh, that one up here wasn't too bad, but it was still off some because I kind of marked the bolts and I wanted to see where I was at and it was about a half a turn off so that could be from just wear. You're supposed to, uh, on these old Chrysler transmissions, you're supposed to actually do a band adjustment every so many hundred thousand miles or I mean every so many thousands of miles. So this one supposedly has 57,000 on it. I'm hard to, after working on this some, I'm hard to believe that's actually the case. Um, but who knows, it still runs. So anyway, all right, let's get the pan cleaned up. Let's get the filter back on it. Let's get this back together and let's see what happens. Show you more. All right, now let's get this pan cleaned up a little bit. Get that old gasket scraped off there. Yeah, you can see that this thing's pretty nasty. Uh, so maybe, I don't know. Who knows? And I know this ain't a working for me. Not what I want. I do not want a pan gasket that looks like this. So, that's blue RTV on there. I don't even know if that's, if that's even automatic transmission proof sealer. I mean, you know. Oh, well, now I've got a phone call. Okay, let's continue getting this thing scraped off of here. There's the old gasket. Kind of looks like a little gasket. You know, I'm really surprised. Well, of course, it's the, tra you know, like I said, the transmission's been worked on, so. But I'm really surprised that, to be quite honest with you, that is the only residue that's in there. So unless it was cleaned out before and maybe it wasn't rebuilt or something, it shouldn't have that much band or you know of the material missing off the band. So maybe we'll uh, maybe this thing will be just like brand used. That's what I want. We'll see. All right, I'm going to keep cleaning this up and I'll get back with you. Show you more.
what I want to do here is take some of my Gorilla Booger and I'm going to put that around this pan. Okay, got our grill booger on there. Let's set our gasket on there. Now I'm going to take my bolts and just lay them in there, hopefully. To just kind of hold it in place. I'm going to put them all in, but I'm going to put some of them in here. Well, that's holding it down pretty good. It was folded in the box, so it's kind of got a... want it to kind of be lined up here a little bit. Okay. I don't like a big mess of this stuff either. Okay. Alright, let's... Uh, by the way, this is what the new filter looks like compared to the old one. So we're going to go put this uh, new filter on. We've got our clean bolts. So let's go do that. Okay, I don't know how good you can see here because, you know, I ain't got no cameraman and I'm laying upside down. So who knows? But here we go. You want to make sure you stick them in the right holes. And these, I couldn't find any torque value for these. So, but I wouldn't think you'd want to tighten them too tight. I mean, they got to be snug. You don't want them falling off. But I mean, so you know, you can leave a comment down below if you know what the torque value is on this. But we're just going to tighten them down. looked over and realized that thing wasn't recording so uh, I don't know where it stopped recording but I'm just going through here and snugging all these up these have got to be torqued at 17 foot-pounds okay where's that Seventeen foot pounds right up here. Yeah. Seventeen is just below twenty on this scale here. I'm waiting until it's a little bit close. I ran out of hand, but let's run these down here. I'm not using my original. Let's do it, I guess. Let's do it. 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 Let's do
There we go, 17. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do them all the way around. Show you more. Get some oil put in this thing. One of these days I might have to get me one of these long snouted things, but I don't have one of those. So we're not going to use that. Flavor of the day is ATF plus four. Now the book says to use Dextron three, um, but this right here says Chrysler Dodge Jeep blah blah blah. I don't know why they make damn many different flavors of this stuff, but. I guess there's a reason for it. Nobody ever told me what it was. Alright, so let's see how much we can spill all over everything. Now it says after you do this you're going to have to put in four quarts. So I'm going to put three in and then we're going to check it. And of course you have to check it with it running. There's one. There is two. Well, I don't see it leaking out on the ground, so that's a good thing, I guess. Alright, let me get this third one in here, and then we'll start it up and check it. Show you more. See if we got any gears here. Oh hell. That some bitch went right into reverse now. He wouldn't even do that for you. Let's see if we got any forward gear. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm 
I'm gonna have to put you down. I can't drive this thing without the power steering. So, all right, let me get this thing turned around, get some license plates on it, and we'll take it for a spin. Show you more. Okay, well, I decided to hold up on taking it for a test drive because I forgot I hadn't changed the oil in this. I was wanting to wait till see if it was actually going to move, and it does. It goes into gear real good, so um, I'm going to pull this oil filter off, maybe, if you'll come off. I may have to get a tool down here to... Gosh, that thing ain't been off of there for 40 years. All right, let me get a tool and take that off. I've already got the oil draining out in the bottom, so all right, show you more. All right, well, I had to get my tool here. And I won't be able to put any oil in this one before I put it on, which is what I usually like to do because it's upside down here, so. There we go. I didn't take too much, but I couldn't do it with my hand. All right. She's loose now. Pull that off of there. Yeah, it looks like I missed my oil drain pan by just about a quarter of an inch. So that's handy as hell. Oh well. Dropped it on the floor. Okay. Knocked the spark plug wire off. You know, typical stuff. We got us a wicks. That's what old uh, Vice Grip Garage is always talking about, so we're going to put a Wix on here. From the O'Reilly's. And we are not going to tighten that down that tight, that's for sure. Just going to use, oh, she's about 27 foot-pounds right there. That's what we want. This thing back All right, I must be running out of film here, so I'm going to put some oil in this. I already got the filter on finally, so if this shuts off, I appreciate you watching. Be sure and like and share, and we're going to put some of this zinc additive in here, but I'm going to run some oil in first before I dump that in, and we're going to put in flavor of the day today is a 1040 SAE from O'Reilly's. Let's see where the funnel's at here. And I did wipe that out from the transmission fluid just so you, you understand. Oh, boy. Just put this... What the heck? Man. Let's dump some in. Okay, well, I'm just having a heck of a time with cameras today. So, um, we're not going to take it for a test drive because I got I had to change the oil. And now i got to go pick up Peyton and get him to work. So, um, But we'll test drive this thing on the next episode. And uh, I got to get some license plates put on the back and the tail lights fixed. So, but we successfully got this A727 transmission shifting. And uh, it's awesome, man. Look at this. Just drop her right into D, into R, and go. So, I'm real happy about that. Thanks for coming along, guys and gals. If you're a. Uh, a gal that's working on vehicles. I hope this helped you. Um, I don't know if what I did was right, but I don't think it was necessarily wrong. So, anyway, like I said, thanks for coming along and be sure and share and like the video. And we'll see you on the next episode where we may tear into something else on this thing. We got to get her ready for Power Tour 2022. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye.